Welcome to the first episode of Beer on the Brain. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a recent myth that has been circulating around on the internet regarding the ability of star sand to kill yeast. So the myth is pretty simple. The claim is that star sand is very effective at killing bacteria, but cannot easily or not very efficiently kill yeast. And as a consequence, people are claiming that if you clean only with star sand, that you're going to end up with unwanted yeast growing in your brewing equipment uh, to the point where some people are claiming they can't switch styles due to the presence of these unwanted yeast. So why is this supposedly happening? Well, it's all centered around claims about the surfactant present in star sand. This is the surfactant, it's called dodecobenzyl sulfonic acid. And the purpose of this is to help the other part of star sand, which is phosphoric acid, gain entry into uh, the bacterial and yeast cells. And so what the myth claims is that this surfactant is positively charged, the membranes of bacteria are negatively charged, and therefore the surfactant is attracted to the bacteria where it interacts with the membranes, allowing the phosphoric acid into the cell, therefore killing the bacteria. Now, according to the myth, yeast are a little different. The myth says that yeast have a positively charged uh, outer wall, and as a consequence, the surfactant can't get in because it's repelled when its positive charge encounters the positive charge on the yeast. So what did the myth get right? Well, the answer is not much. In fact, the only thing it got right is the charge on bacterial membranes. So there's two major groups of bacteria, the gram negatives. Their outer membrane is covered in a molecule called lipopolysaccharide. There's gram positive bacteria. Their outer surfaces have a lot of lipidicoic acid. And the important thing about these two different molecules is they contain lots of phosphate groups, which I circled here in boxes. So phosphate groups are essentially phosphoric acids stuck inside of molecules. And when the stuff is put in water, it's quite negatively charged. And so this is why the surface of bacteria are negatively charged. So what went wrong? Well, quite a bit. Remember that positively charged layer on the yeast cell? Well, that's not quite right. So if we look at a yeast membrane or surface starting on the inside of the cell, the first thing we encounter is the membrane that actually surrounds the cell, the thing that physically separates the inside of the cell from the outside environment. This isn't a very strong structure, so yeast have a thick layer of something called beta-glucan, uh, which is basically a whole bunch of glucose molecules stuck together to form a wall beta-glucan is uncharged. The next layer on the outside of the cell is made of something called mannin, and mannin is just uh, repeated groups of mannose connected together. Just another sugar, and again, this is uncharged. And lastly, the very outer surface of the mannin is something called phosphomannin. And what this is are mannin groups connected by phosphates. And if you recall from the bacteria, those phosphates are negatively charged. So whereas the myth claimed yeast cells have positive charges on the outside, this is actually wrong. Yeast are negatively charged. This was, has been well established since the 1950s. But that's not the only thing the myth got wrong. Let's keep in mind here the surfactant, and the key part in this thing's name is the word acid. Acids behave in a fairly specific way in water. So I've circled the acid group here. What happens when you dissolve acid groups in water is they release a free proton or a hydrogen ion, uh, which is positively charged, and they retain a negative charge. So acids are usually negatively charged in water. Now I say usually because whether or not that hydrogen falls off actually depends on the pH of the solution. So we have a negatively charged surfactant and a negatively charged yeast and a negatively charged bacteria. So how could this possibly work? Well, the answer has to do with the structure of surfactants. So the surfactant has this head group, which is charged and charged things like to be in water. And it has this big tail uh, that's uncharged, which really does not want to be in water. This is literally an oil molecule attached to this little water uh, loving headpiece. And as you all know, oil and water don't mix. Turns out the membranes of yeast are very similar in structure. They have water-hating bits and water-loving bits, and these organize so that all the water-loving bits are facing either out of the cell or into the uh, cytosol, uh, sandwiching those water-hating bits in between. So when a surfactant molecule encounters a yeast cell, 
it inserts that water heating tail into the membrane, leaving the water loving head out in uh, the, the extracellular space. Now this creates a bit of an issue though, of course, because the yeast is surrounded by this negatively charged uh, phosphomannan layer, which you would think should push the surfactant right back out into solution. But there's one little piece of the puzzle missing here, and that's actually the effect of having this water heating bit embedded in the yeast membrane. This acts as an anchor that holds the molecule in place. And this is a really strong anchor. It's about 10,000 times stronger than the charge effect of that fossil man and that's trying to push this molecule out. So once one of these surfactants is embedded into the yeast membrane, it's there for good. So what this means is that while some of the surfactants will be repelled by the charge on the yeast cell membrane, those molecules that have enough energy to penetrate in will be uh, essentially permanently embedded into uh, the yeast membrane. They'll accumulate over time and eventually this will destroy the yeast. The exact same process occurs in the exact same manner when it comes to bacteria. So the reality of the situation is that star sand kills bacteria and yeast just fine and it kills both by the exact same process.